This is our first ever virtual annual meeting. And even though all of us have been in many of these Zoom and WebEx meetings over the last few months, uh, as you know, we still are figuring the technology out and it's easy to make glitches. So forgive me in advance and please don't hesitate to ask for help. Um, I'm Sarah Pritchard, Northwestern University Dean of Libraries and the board chair of the Chicago Collections Consortium. This morning, I will try to share some of our recent accomplishments, our excitement at programs and new members, talk about our board and committees, and of course, we will hope to leave time for your questions. Um, this is also includes voting for board members. So this meeting this morning, this is our member governance meeting. We also have a board meeting later this morning and more of a programmatic presentation uh, a little later in the summer. So unlike past years, we're not combining the members meeting with um, special presentation, but we do have special presentations ready to go. Uh, we will be recording today's session uh, for members who aren't able to uh, participate and posting it on the Chicago Collections website. So um, just be mindful of that as you participate. Uh, and uh, please feel free to share any questions via the chat box because uh, we will not be using audio for member questions. I want to take a moment to recognize the many conflicts that we face in our world right now. So this meeting is not being held in some sort of bubble, isolated from uh, what we're all going through. I want to recognize the many lives that have been lost, the hundreds of thousands of lives that have been lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic and to civil unrest. And specifically, I want to express our grief and anger at the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, and our support for protest against racial injustice. And uh, as many of you know, the Chicago Collections Consortium just worked on a series of digital exhibits related to the history of protest in, in Chicago. We want to recognize our support for Black Lives Matter. And I'll talk more about what we hope to do within our consortium later, but I just want to acknowledge that we're having this meeting at an especially difficult time uh, in our city uh, and in our world. And we have to engage with those times uh, as hard as it is, we must, we must struggle to work together in, in these multiple shared contexts. So, um, so thank you for taking a moment with me to acknowledge that. Here's the agenda uh, that we'll go through uh, this morning. Um, we'll acknowledge our members and supporters, we'll elect directors, uh, I'll give some highlights of the past year and a little bit of what's coming up next. Um, and then ways that you can participate more in our consortium uh, and questions, any questions you may have. We have about an hour for the meeting this morning. And I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. I can't actually see the clock while I have my screen share and video going. So. Uh, Jeannie, you'll have to put in the chat box if you think I'm um, ling ling lingering too long. I would particularly like to thank the governing members, which is also in effect includes all the founding members. When I think of how this started with a few of us talking in 2006 in the fall with the um, Festival of Maps. 
And it, it's quite remarkable, even though we are only coming up on the 10th anniversary of the formal organization of our consortium, we started talking about, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we all got together more often um, as Chicago-based cultural heritage institutions? And so it's really quite remarkable. These are the governing members who continue to um, contribute the significant core resources, both financial and, and personnel and expertise, technology support, funding, assistance with personnel and logistics, uh, running an organization, even if you have the money, takes so much engagement uh, and so much um, oversight that I'm really grateful to all of our governing members. We've also made it possible for a great variety of participating and associate members to join. And this group continues to expand. Um, this is an incredibly exciting way for us to have a very broad reach across very diverse, smaller, differently organized kinds of organizations in Chicago. And I think when you look at the incredible range of types of organizations on this particular slide, um, you should realize how um, open are the opportunities within the collections consortium. Um, it's not literally just about paper archives. We have sound archives. We have um, botanical archives. Uh, we have um, museums that are, uh, are object centered. So uh, I encourage any of you uh, who might be aware of an additional organization that has Chicago related um, archival, broadly defined resources um, to be um, working with us to welcome them into our consortium. We are especially, especially excited to highlight four new members this year. I want to say from the beginning when we started brainstorming who could be a member and we talked about the category of um, partnerships and partnerships was a way to welcome commercial organizations that are not nonprofits by our bylaws are not eligible to be uh, voting members, but they are eligible to participate in our programs and contribute to our work. And um, the many of these organizations have significant archives. And we started brainstorming, you know, 13, 14 years ago, who are the people in Chicago that are commercial entities that have fantastic historical archives? And from the get-go, we had the Cubs and Wrigley Field on that list. And it has now come to pass. Uh, Chicago Cubs history in Chicago is very long and extends well beyond Wrigley Field. Uh, but this membership is, is very exciting and we look forward to finding ways to engage with the history and archives that they bring to the table. We also welcome the Union League Club, which has founded over 140 years ago and boasts of a renowned art collection and continues to uh, lead programs and members that have an impact on Chicago in education, government reform, uh, justice, and other areas. And also, Media Burn Archives and The Grove. Media Burn Archives collects, these are um, associate members, not commercial partners. Uh, Media Burn collects and shares videos created by artists and activists and community groups, and then makes those shareable. They have very extensive collections and um, local Chicago politics is one of their great strengths. Uh, so again, we look forward to finding ways to bring those collections to the attention of uh, scholars and, and uh, educators and the public. The Grove of Glenview was once home to Illinois' pioneering naturalist Robert Kennecott. And the Kennecott Archives captures uh, the family history of his family, but also his pioneering work um, on uh, natural history uh, in the Chicago area. So welcome to these members and 
ordinarily you'd have a chance to go chat them up around the edges of the room. So just you know, look for a virtual opportunity uh, to do that. We've been very lucky again since the beginning to benefit and we could not actually be the organization we are today without the support of multiple, both local and national funding agencies. From the very beginning, the Andrew Mellon Foundation uh, and many of the others, MacArthur Foundation and Mellon were the ones we talked to really the first, like, don't you think it would be great if we could organize this consortium? Subsequently, we've worked with the Driehaus Foundation, the Donnelly Foundation, the Illinois Humanities Council, the Illinois Arts Council, and the Terra Foundation. And you'll hear more about our work with Terra when Jean Long speaks at the end of, of the meeting. They have been um, very engaged with us, not only as a funding agency, but as a programmatic partner. I'd like to recognize um, the people who've been our boards and, and committee chairs. Um, this has been the past year's uh, board of directors. Um, I'll mention in a moment, some there are some tra transitions here, um, but I wanna thank uh, Sharon, Ellen, Mary Case, Jan, Chinlin, Michelle, Frisk, Doug Litz, Brenda Johnson, Mary Ann Ryan, Devin Savage and Alice Schreier for really consistent support in managing our board meetings and board participation, which helps us plan programs and articulate the strategic plan and make uh, financial prioritization. Um, these are the many committee and task force chairs. Um, Again, from the beginning, the work of this association, this consortium has been carried out by the committees, not by the executive director on her own or by the board on its own. So we benefit from a, a octopus-like structure of committees. And at the end of this presentation also, we'll tell you again how to participate. These committees are all open, every one of them is open to additional members from your organizations. You do not have to be a board member. You do not have to be the official representative from your organization. You just have to be a member of a member institution, a staff member. So if you would like to find ways for your staff um, and maybe newer staff who aren't as familiar with our work, we welcome participation uh, in all of these committees. Um, these are the chairs who've been, um, let's see, did I, did I somehow skip one here? No, there's a slightly in a different order than what I expected. Um, we have several transitions going on on the board uh, before we get to electing next year's uh, board, the incoming board. Um, I will be rotating as board chair. I've served three terms. It's been a fantastic work, but I will be um, rotating off the position as board chair. I will still be on the board as the past chair. Uh, Sharon Bostic uh, has done fantastic work as our treasurer, and she too will continue to serve the board in other capacities. Um, Mary Case, intrepid co-founder. I can't say enough good things about Mary Case who wrote all the grants in the early years and put up her organization, UIC, as the fiduciary agent before we had a way to collect any money. We could not have started this organization without Mary's very hard work and commitment. And Mary is actually retiring like any instant, uh, may have already actually retired. Uh, it's hard for me to imagine not having the chance to see Mary all the time. So uh, we hope we will, in fact, find ways to engage her. I should just say, as fair warning, you retire from your job, you don't have to stop working with Chicago Collections. Thank you, Mary, on behalf of all of us. Um, and Jan Chindlin, uh, who has also been very active for many years, has was served as a secretary, as a membership co-chair, uh, and 
uh, worked uh, very assiduously on potential new models for membership and really helped uh, bring creativity to the concept of, of membership, which I tell you, some of these things sound boring, and I think everyone on this slide can attest to the fact that it is not. Um, also stepping off the board will be Michelle Frisk, who's been uh, a fantastic member. Michelle is leaving the Chicago Public Library to launch her own uh, consulting work. And so she had been serving on the board as CPL's rep. Uh, we hope to certainly still see lots of Michelle in the region. Uh, I'd like to welcome Carrie Cascio as the next representative from um, Chicago Public Libraries. Chicago Public, also one of our founding members, which has been a real way to signal the diversity of the organization that it's been public libraries, academic libraries, historical agencies, museums, small independent organizations of every kind. I'd like to also take a moment to remember two of our individual staff members who we lost this year, staff members at uh, member institutions. Um, as I've just said, the work of this consortium happens through all of the work of many, many individuals on many committees. Uh, so it's important for us that we say a few words about Doro Boehm, Special Collections Librarian at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and at Columbia College, um, and had really unique knowledge of artist books uh, and was a very inspirational, committed to education, uh, uh, librarian and teacher. Um, we also lost Bob Sandusky at UIC. Uh, Bob was crucial to the leadership on the early development of our portal. Bob, as Associate University Librarian for Information Technology at UIC, which is where all our systems were hosted and still are hosted. And Bob's uh, commitment and, and leadership and collegiality uh, will be missed. Um, his legacy will live on in the Explore portal, and we'll talk more about that a little later. But again, I ask you to join me in a moment of remembrance um, for these um, wonderful colleagues. This is a formal business bit that we are required to conduct uh, by our bylaws, and we're always excited to welcome um, new directors, and then in turn, the board at its meeting later this morning will elect <clears throat> new officers. But it is the prerogative of the full membership, as you all are assembled here, to elect uh, the people who will come on to the board. And um, we are open to a great diversity on the board. That is, to serve on the board, one does not automatically have to be a member of a member institution. Um, so we have the opportunity under our bylaws to nominate people to the board who have been strong supporters of ours or who may represent uh, the nonprofit sector in a different way or the educational sector. So we're always, always happy to receive your recommendations of people who would wanna make a commitment to serve on our board. And it is an active board, so they have to be willing uh, to take a direct part, but it does not have to be um, from our members, and it does not have to be, uh, and it can be not only all of our members, it can be any of our members, not just governing members. So we are always interested in diversifying the board, both in terms of types of people and types of organizations. I wanna thank uh, Mary Ann Ryan and the nominating committee <coughs> for bringing forward um, a slate of proposed directors who would take office uh, after this meeting for the fiscal year 2021. Um, Pamela Hackbart Dean, Head of Special Collections and Archives at the University of Illinois Chicago. Uh, Brenda Johnson, already a member of the board, Library Director and University Librarian at the University of Chicago. Just Rob Karpinski, who some of you may know, but many of you may not have had the chance to meet yet, is the Associate Vice President for Academic and Library Affairs. 
at DePaul University uh, and has been um, very wonderfully supportive as he's come to know more and more about the consortium. And DePaul is the sort of um, fiscal agent. DePaul is how we manage to issue paychecks uh, and, and convene a lot of meetings. So we want to especially thank Rob and DePaul University for their uh, leadership uh, in helping us manage our uh, association. Doug Litz, Executive Director of Libraries at the Ryerson and Burnham Libraries at the Art Institute, um, wonderful participant um, on the board and the Executive Committee. And Leora Siegel, Senior Director of the Lenart Library at the Chicago Botanic Garden, um, and very incredible multi-part library that has everything from uh, rare books to um, volunteer literature related to people for whom gardening is a hobby, to quite heavy duty scientific literature for the botanists and plant genetics people at the Botanic Garden. So a very diverse and wonderful uh, library that, uh, that she leads. We are open to any nominations from the floor. I'll just give you a moment. <clears throat> it helps to have asked the person in advance. But if you would like to make a nomination uh, from the floor, uh, please do so now in the chat box. Seeing nothing come up in the chat box, as far as I can see, uh, we will proceed to the vote. Ballots will be issued via email in Google Doc to the voting governing members. I may have to ask Jean to explain how this works. Uh, so governing members will see a ballot in a designated chat box. That's correct, Sarah. Um, uh, it will be released, the Google Doc ballot will be released to their private chat box. We're asking them to, to complete that ballot, um, which will be registered with us. And uh, Jeannie, I'm just gonna add, uh, this is Kate Flynn, who's the portal manager. I've been private messaging all of you. Um, so everybody that who is a governing member should have got it in their chat box. And if they haven't, just please let me know and I can send that to you. Sarah, we can still see your screen. Oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. Um, Will and I went out of full screen. I will submit uh, the ballot later since I'm in uh, in screen sharing mode. Um, so, everybody else, um, please submit uh, your ballot. We had quite a lot of discussion in our practice yesterday about was it possible to have screen sharing and um, presenter windows open separately. And it turns out, um, unless you have multiple monitors, it doesn't really work. So uh, I don't have multiple monitors, so forgive me for that. So we will um, uh, tally, are we trying to tally the votes in real time or report out simply at the board meeting later? Jeannie? We will report um, at the board meeting. All right. So thank you, governing members, uh, for, uh, for filling out um, your ballots. I'll take a few moments to talk about the really fun work that we've done over the past year. It's been, as you can imagine, a very um, strange, uh, disconnected kind of year when we look at the year as a whole as I'm sure has been the case for every single one of you. Um, at the same time, we've been uh, very productive and able to pivot effectively because of so much work that we already had in progress. Um, we, um, we have really reached out for a lot of new collaborations this year, and I'll talk about some of the strategic partnerships that have helped us reach new audiences. So, um, we've been especially pleased to welcome Marsha, um, and I know Marsha so well, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say 
um, that I'm forgetting what order are her her hyphenated last name. I apologize, Marsha. Marsha uh, at the Walker Mc Williams. Excuse me. Yeah. Walker McWilliams. Walker McWilliams at the Black Metropolis Research Consortium, who has immediately taken very strong leadership in that consortium over the past year. Um, and uh, we're looking, we did some co-sponsorships already with them, and we're definitely looking uh, to do more. Um, the, we did uh, some joint public program with BMRC on uh, Lee Bay and Don Hainer speaking as authors of recent books about Chicago. Uh, Chicago area archivists uh, did a wonderful genealogy workshop with our partnership. Uh, the Chicago Cultural Alliance, stories of immigration from uh, their membership. Uh, the Chicago Research Summit, a relatively new initiative for us to be participating and presenting to them. Uh, Jean Long is on their advisory panel now. Um, Chicago Architecture Biennial was a great opportunity. Uh, we did a couple of different programs with the Caxton Club, where we have uh, some overlapping memberships as well. Um, and of course, interest in books and archives. And um, for the National Archival Finding Aid Network, which is a national uh, initiative uh, that we, and especially through Kate Flynn's work on the portal, uh, we've been working to try to uh, be able to <clears throat> have more seamless uh, interoperability across finding aids, across multiple archival um, search systems and websites. Um, the um, CCC staff and committee members have um, been also taking it on the road, so to speak. Uh, virtually uh, in terms of sharing our resources. We've done several presentations, as I said, the Chicago Research Summit, um, but also uh, other conferences that e our staff or our members were able to explicitly make presentations about our consortium. Uh, so I wanna thank Jean and all the members who helped us be able to participate uh, in these presentations. And please let us know if you would be interested in presenting on our behalf at any conferences that you are already active with. We're seeing great opportunities in uh, the digital environment uh, for, it, it's actually become easier in many ways for us to make presentations. Obviously we don't have to travel and we have a lot of stored PowerPoint accumulated material that we are happy to help you if you would like to do a presentation. This is not something that, that you have to do from scratch. Um, we've had a very active uh, online reference participation. Our cooperative reference committee provides um, responses and we root around to our network uh, responses that maybe we don't know the first time and we Route it to a member library that might be able to provide a better answer. And these come in through the web portal. So it's kind of over the transom. We never know what folks are going to ask. It's everything from school age children with homework questions to advanced researchers who don't know where a certain archive might be located. Um, we get questions from the media, uh, the general public, genealogy questions. So this has been wonderful. As you can see, we've had a big increase um, just only midway through uh, 2020. It's already a big increase over 2019. And we expect this continue as so many institutions in the area are doing uh, remote teaching. In fact, I should say, we get questions from all over the globe. Um, I should have asked and didn't think of it in advance um, to put a Google Analytics geographical map up of where our um, hits come from to the portal and to cooperative reference. We are able to map that. And I'm proud to say that we do in fact get queries from all over the entire globe because we're so accessible, easy to use, and it's a, a free resource thanks to the support from all of you. 
we've done quite a few workshops for you on how to help us build that portal. So the metadata hopper, some really clever, unique software developed by us and, and open source, um, digital exhibits workshops, both to help us do digital exhibits and to help your staffs at your organizations do digital exhibits and um, train the trainers so that we can keep doing these same workshops. So these have been well attended uh, and productive both for ourselves as a consortium and for you as individual members. And we, are, we have done some little surveys of you. You may recall getting surveys. What kind of workshops would you like to see? Um, please both continue to answer the survey and continue to tell us <clears throat> what kind of workshops um, might be Chicago Collections uniquely able to offer to your staff that you're not able to get through other organizations and that will help you make better use of our resources, upload your materials to the portal. <clears throat> so uh, we've also in the past done workshops on on digital preservation and other kinds of technical work, as well as we can do more to help you put together uh, teaching and outreach events. So um, we're happy to do more of this. Um, we've had some really exciting uh, public programs over the past year. <clears throat> we don't get to sit this close together anymore, sorry. Uh, at some point, we'll look nostalgically back at these pictures of people crowded together in a lecture hall. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> um, we did a really well attended uh, session that I mentioned a minute ago with Chicago area archivists. <clears throat> and um, seems like an incredibly long uh, time ago. Um, we all know that archival resources for genealogy are crucial for that field. Um, but often not well documented and difficult to locate. So what do we have across our consortium that's unique and how do you use it? And this is one of the glories of the portal because you can search by family names, you can search by neighborhoods, you can search by uh, categories of types of people who've lived in Chicago. So um, our ability to reach the public uh, with archival resources for genealogy is very exciting. Um, this was a presentation we did jointly with the Caxton Club. This is a book that the Caxton Club published, Chicago by the Book, and with um, short individual chapters, each one really an exciting essay about books that have shaped uh, Chicago. And it's um, mostly, although not exclusively, architectural history. That's why it's called, you know, books that built Chicago was the program. The Chicago by the Book book is not limited to architectural history, but it includes all of um, the items that were shared at, at the public program. This is a fantastic book that you can buy from uh, the Casting Club. I encourage everybody to get it. Uh, it's got many author names that you would recognize. Uh, we had a great presentation at um, the Peggy Notabart Museum. Uh, oops, sorry for that typo in there. I didn't catch that. Uh, and this is a wonderful speaker who wrote a book about urban wildlife that particularly highlights urban coyotes in Chicago. And uh, he has documented information about the behavior of coyotes in Chicago that is quite impressively sophisticated. I encourage you all to go look at some of his YouTube videos where he shows that uh, coyotes know how to watch street signals so they know when to cross the street. I'm not making this up. It's a little scary, um, but was a, a very engaging speaker and particularly highlights why we have resources like zoos and botanic gardens and the Peggy Notabart Natural History Museum in our consortium because those kinds of resources are equally crucial to uh, documenting the culture of our city. Um, we had, uh, this is, I mentioned a moment ago, uh, co-sponsored with the Black Metropolis Research Consortium. We had a really full auditorium 
very exciting presentation about these two books. One about the lost South Side, the architecture of the South Side, um, some remarkable buildings and neighborhoods, um, and then the uh, Jesse Binga, uh, who um, ought to be a household name and really isn't, and why was that? And it's a very complicated story. I'm, I'm proud to say that both of these books were published by Northwestern University Press. So the Black Metropolis Research Consortium, the Chicago Collections Consortium, and Northwestern University Press uh, all put this on. There was books available for signing, and it was um, a remarkably uh, textured discussion of the history of uh, Chicago. So thank you to all those uh, presenters. And we did this in February during uh, Black History Month. And both of these authors have gone on to do additional presentations in Chicago. So I encourage you to, uh, they are both great presenters if you have a chance. Um, we pretty much um, quickly had to pivot uh, to online about starting with this lecture. So um, this was April, obviously we had planned this well before April. So around about March, we realized, okay, we're not doing this in an auditorium the way we just did the Lee Bay and Don Hainer presentation. So uh, we did a fully online webinar co-sponsored by the New Newbury Library about the woman after whom, uh, the woman and her family after whom uh, Kinsey Street is named uh, and uh, Chicago before the fire. Um, I, I commend this to you. Also, the connections between uh, Chicago and Atlanta, uh, or I should say Savannah, Georgia, as evidenced through the uh, family of Juliet Kinsey. And I'll just drop this as a hint. Anyone who's on the call who was ever a Girl Scout, go look up Juliet Kinsey and who was her granddaughter. Um, we um, will be. Uh, launching um, uh, this this event already happened and we're going to do many more now of these presentations to promote member collections in the virtual environment. So we had a presentation about media burn uh, to learn more about those hidden treasures um, and we'll be doing more of these. I don't know Jean whether this one was uh, recorded and and posted for people who didn't have a chance to view it. Do you know if that's still available? Yes, it has been recorded and we are posting it. So again, this is another good reason to always take a look at, at uh, our website periodically and see what's new. Um, uh, this was also in partnership with the Newberry uh, Library, uh, photographer Art Shea, uh, and um, the author, uh, Eric Gelman, who's written a book uh, about uh, his photography and is particularly uh, appropriate as we continue to look at um, how racial and economic inequality have shaped Chicago and, and an issue that we cannot view as simply historical. This is a present day issue. This is an important book for understanding uh, the long history and context in Chicago. And if it weren't for photographers and archivists saving this material and this living history, living history of today is what turns into archives. So I know that people are busy collecting artifacts and photography right now of the Black Lives Matter movement in Chicago, the social protests um, and the, uh, the, the terrible conflicts in multiple locations in Chicago. Uh, it's painful, but we must, we must continue to archive and save our history so we can understand it and do better. Um, this is coming up soon, uh, Sophonisba Breckenridge. Um, this year, um, lest we forget, is the 100th anniversary of uh, women's suffrage um, in, uh, voted in 1920. Uh, so there have been a lot of events of many of our member organizations 
related to uh, the extremely active um, position of Chicago women, both black and white women in Chicago, very, very active in the turn of the century women's movements. Um, so uh, I'll just highlight this one program uh, that we will be doing um, coming up June 3rd. Excuse me, past June 3rd. I'm losing track. This is the this is the sort of amorphous environment we find ourselves in where I'm embarrassed to admit that I forgot that June 3rd already passed. Uh, so <laughs> each day blends into the next. Um, this is a digital exhibit that is um, currently uh, up and available. We actually released this last fall. We had no idea how pertinent it was going to be that we better do more and more to pivot to digital exhibitions and digital programs. So this was already in the works last year. Um, it was even, even for the last several years, it's been difficult to stage collaborative physical exhibits as we did very early in our history as a consortium, we had shared participation in physical exhibits. And that that is just hugely logistically complicated. Um, and so we have developed some great skills and expertise and partnerships in shared digital exhibits. Um, and that also require curators and designers. And this is a particularly beautiful one. Uh, that you can find linked um, at our website. It was including member contributions from the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum, the Lincoln Park Zoo, the Chicago Botanic Garden, and North Central College, and traces the interaction of urban and natural environments uh, in Chicago over the last 150 years. Um, we also, as I alluded a few moments ago last year, um, this actually emerged out of seeking ways to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the 1968 uh, Democratic Convention and Chicago uh, protests and riots that occurred in that year. And as we looked at how to commemorate those events in 2018, it gave rise to a much a broader series of events related in general to the history of protest in Chicago. And this was one of the several uh, commemorations that we did um, for um, uh, the Chicago 1919 confronting the race riots, uh, uh, another painful aspect of our history and, and crucial. It should not be remembered simply because of the 100th anniversary in 2019 but as a, as a constant aspect and, and factor that has shaped uh, literally where people live and how people behave in Chicago. Uh, uh, unfortunately, not always shaped in a, in a good way. I keep alluding to the Explore portal uh, where we mount um, both catalog data, metadata about your collections and also images. Um, so we want to just talk about what's new. Um, um, we have incorporated new materials from many of the members of the Chicago uh, Cultural Alliance. Uh, over a thousand images have been added uh, from institutions that participated in the Stories of Immigration project. I want to emphasize that um, the crucial thing for you to help us add is metadata. And great if you have images, but don't worry if you don't yet have images, because we also are helping to host projects for you to digitize and get training on how to digitize and upload additional images. These can be images that you retain on your servers or that you transfer to ours. You don't have to deposit the images with us, but you can. Uh, and you, uh, that's the glory of our metadata hopper. And we can also host uh, and, and harvest uh, your metadata. 
So please be sure to contact our portal committee and portal manager, Kate Flynn, uh, who's really responsible for all of this content um, that I'm presenting. We've, for the first time, had great contributions from North Park University, the Union League Club, and the Pullman National Monument, part of the National Park Service. Um, and again, each of these organizations has significant materials that are distinctive aspects of, of Chicago's history. And we wanna find a way to share this with a broader audience and the portal, which as you know, is really user-friendly, the portal is the way to do that, whether it is just descriptions of your material and also actual images, we can do both. We have a lot of um, work planned for the year ahead. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just talk about that. Um, we shape our planning uh, according to uh, a strategic plan. We're now in at least the third iteration um, of our strategic plan, which is a, a good reminder that uh, a strategic plan cannot be static. We have to constantly revisit the plan. Um, at the same time, we need a plan to help us do important prioritization. So this is one of the key obligations of the board is we have a lot of things we can do, but we can't do all of them. So we, we shape our work uh, with a strategic plan, which went through a major revamp, thanks to many uh, contributions from you as members, um, about two, just two years ago. As I said, at least a third iteration since we um, launched our strategic planning processes in um, 2010-11 at the beginning of the consortium. Um, we have four broad areas of work. These are our organizational goals. Within these, each year, we look to set particular targets. We want to, above all, enhance public access to Chicago-focused collections. It's hard to define that word, Chicago-focused collections. We did a lot of hair splitting 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, I think, you know, we know what it means. We're very inclusive in, in, in defining what that means. Um, we want to also foster an engaged community. The collections are undergird all the rest of the work. The collections undergird teaching, research, school participation, individual participation, organizational participation. So that's what we mean by an engaged community, whether it's our, our members or the general public um, or anybody who's interested in Chicago history, and that's foster an engaged community. Build a strong involved membership. As I said, we need, uh, we rely, we are created by you, we rely on you. We want to have uh, your engagement and to help you strengthen your organizations. What can we do to help you do your work better? And it's a, a mutual organizational goal. And then, um, of course, sustaining, I didn't want to skip over that too quickly, sorry. Sustaining an effective, efficient organization, more important than ever in these difficult times, how do we steward our resources effectively? And our fantastic executive director uh, really has been key to that. Um, I, this is my initiative as I step down from the board, I'm gonna leave the board with an agenda to explicitly make a greater commitment to improving inclusion, equity, and diversity within our programming, within our committee work. The six specific goals that are listed here are goals that are already included in our strategic plan, but that very readily, if you read through them, these clearly lend themselves to opportunities to advance diversity, equity, and, and racial justice. We have to really take these goals seriously and look for ways, whether it is uh, recognition by the public in telling the story of Chicago history, expanding cultural partnerships, programming, 
inclusive strategic plan, um, meaningful collaborations, effective committee structure, and who are the people that participate. So these six goals will, I hope, provide a sub framework within the strategic plan for a targeted agenda over the next couple of years to uh, strengthen equity, diversity, and inclusion, and, and ways to advance racial justice in our community. Um, in general, these, these are ongoing goals. Um, I will just highlight uh, specifically planning for our anniversary, which is uh, officially 2022, the 10th anniversary of our incorporation. As you've just heard me say, we started sort of in 2006 and sort of in 2010, but legally we became an entity in 2022. We're working on a lot of different ways, uh, sort of a, a um, sequential series of activities to highlight uh, the anniversary. All of these are continuing efforts in which we seek your help. So if you feel that you want to work on these types of initiatives, please step forward uh, by volunteering to the board or to a committee. Um, we have specific partnerships that we expect to advance uh, with, particularly interesting is Chicago Public Schools. We've been making a lot of overtures to them uh, to look at how to help integrate uh, Chicago history resources uh, within uh, schools, working with school teachers, working with the leadership of Chicago Public Schools. So we're always looking uh, for some good partner individuals. If you know of people in the leadership of Chicago Public Schools who would welcome an opportunity to help us participate more effectively, uh, please pass along um, that name to us or that sector. I mean, as you all know, Chicago Public Schools is an enormous organization. Um, but we will be looking for ways to advance all of these uh, partnerships. We have a couple of upcoming programs. I can truly say these have not happened yet. Uh, uh, and, and these are additional ways to highlight our members. I strongly encourage you to tune in on June 26 for the Alliance Francaise presentation with um, um, Renee Seto. And um, I'm sure this is an organization that um, many of you might have wondered, well, Alliance Francaise, you know, what kind of archives do they have? What do they do that's uniquely Chicago-centric? Aren't they just about France? Well, listen in and you will learn uh, the fantastic history of uh, the Chicago-centered work of the Alliance Francaise. Um, we also have a highlight. We are happy to welcome new leadership at each of these crucial members of our organization. So Greg Yao, new president of the Center for Research Libraries. Uh, Danny Green, new um, president at the Newberry Library, and Marsha Walker McWilliams, the new executive director at the Black Metropolis Research Consortium. So these are three really dynamic, energizing people who've already contributed. Each one of these three people has already contributed actively to not only, of course, their own organizations, but to our consortium. And we're incredibly excited to bring this program to you. We've got a couple workshops coming up over the summer. Cataloging, it's all about cataloging, folks. If we don't catalog the materials, no one's ever gonna discover them. So it may sound kind of uh, technical, uh, but I encourage uh, participation of your staffs, any staff who would like to help, any staff member of your organization, you don't have to be a cataloger. People who wanna help get your content into our portal. Also, more interestingly, how to look at how you describe your collections. 
assessing bias in your cataloging. We've known for decades, decades, librarians have been critiquing lists of subject headings, uh, the Library of Congress subject headings, the Sears list of subject headings. These are very culturally specific lists that reflect particular contexts that aren't maybe a context that we want them to reflect. And so how do you assess the bias that uh, you might not realize has been embedded in your metadata for well over 100 years um, because of the time in the late 19th century when these descriptive frameworks began to be shaped? So how do we update and revise those frameworks? Sarah, just to give you, we're down to our last five minutes. Okay. Perfect timing, Jean. Um, here's a repeat of the names of the committees. Um, contact Jeannie Long if you would like to serve on any of these committees. Uh, just send her an email. Um, you don't have to remember who's the chair of the committee, um, but we welcome participation. Each committee needs more members all the time. Uh, we've got a very active social media presence. Please uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, you know, hit the like key quite a lot. Um, and you can find the links to this uh, on our homepage at chicagocollections.org. All right. Um, please share questions in the chat box. Um, and um, I apologize for running a tad late. If we can't get to all your questions this morning, we will save anything that's in the chat box and follow up with you later. Or if it's a question from a board member, we have uh, our board member convening, board meeting uh, convening um, at 10.15. And Sarah, we had a quick question on um, someone stating that they know of, organi of an organization. How can they go about um, you know, proposing that as a member of Chicago Collections? That's a great question. If you send the name of the organization to Jean Long, uh, she will work with the membership committee. It may be that we've already reached out to them uh, and we, and maybe they're not ready or maybe we know something about their situation, but it may be that we have not reached out to them. And often it's helpful for us to know that you as an individual might be a member or might have a connection. Uh, it's always easier for us to approach a potential member when we already have someone uh, who's uh, connected to that member. But even without that connection, um, we we can reach out. Um, and the easiest thing to do is, is send us the name. If it is a member that is not a 501c3 themselves, they can participate through our partner program, as I mentioned, with Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Field, and there are other um, organizations uh, in Chicago that are longstanding uh, corporations in Chicago with a strong commitment to our area, and we're happy to welcome them as, as partners. Um, but we would, we would first quietly look and see whether it's an organization we've already uh, reached out to. Great, and we're just at the 10 o'clock hour. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to be with us this morning and participating uh, and, and committing your resources as members. You, uh, you help us make our board. You help us, frankly, by paying your dues, all the different levels of dues. Every one of those is important. Um, we, we do seek additional grant and outside support, but you are the core, the, the membership, uh, your commitment of your organization's um, resources, your organization's name, uh, and your own staff's work is, is invaluable. Uh, and I wanna thank all of you again this morning.